The Boolean Collections plugin allows you to work with Booleans in what I consider a more organized manner in Blender 2.8. Now at the time of recording, Blender 2.80 is in alpha, but for the most part this is working as intended. So what do I mean by working with booleans in a more organized manner? Well, if you look at the right here, you'll see in our collection we have all of our items in one collection. Our main item is this cylinder, and our cutters over here are also part of this collection. And if we have a lot of cutters, this is going to fill up our collection really fast. So what this does is... well, let me show you. So first we select the cutter and then we select the item we want to cut it from and we do a difference and you'll see what happened here is that cylinder was removed from our collection and it was added to a new collection called cylinder the name of the collection is going to be the name of the main object you're cutting from in addition that cutter was told to be rendered in wireframe and it is told to not render in well our renders the main cylinder on the other hand is still part of our collection so what we can do is we can toggle our collection's visibility. So now we don't see our cutters that are cutting from this cylinder, but we still see this cylinder because it is part of our collection. We can also re-toggle that back so we can hide and show our cutters whenever we want. And if we want to, we can also just select all of our Boolean modifiers that are modifying our cylinder. Now because this boolean was applied as a modifier, we can still do stuff to our cutters. So let's select our cutter, go into edit mode, and select the top face. And let's inset the face a little bit. And then let's extrude that all the way up. And you'll see now that our cutter is now cutting a hole with the Roy cylinder. Again, because this was applied as a modifier, we can also apply a modifier to our actual cutter. So let's add a modifier to our cylinder. Let's do a mirror. We will mirror across this cylinder and let's do across the Y axis. And then we can duplicate this and rotate this along the center by 60 degrees. And we can mirror across the X as well. And now we have more cutters to cut into our cylinder with. So let's select these cutters and select our cylinder and do a subtract. We can also do the same thing for this part over here. I'm not actually sure what it's called, but let's add a modifier, mirror uh, across this, and we will once again duplicate this. Rotate it around the center by 60 degrees, and mirror across the Y as well. And then we can select both of these, and then select our cylinder last, and do a difference. And now we have that cutting across there. If this is getting too messy for you, you can also toggle the visibility of our cutters. Let's also subtract this from our cylinder, so do a difference right there. Now you'll see that this boolean didn't really do it right. Uh, Blender doesn't do its booleans right sometimes. And to fix this, you can either mess around with the overlap threshold, which in this case won't work for our center part, or you can just reorganize your booleans and hope that fixes it. So if we click this up arrow, we can move it up in this axis. so it happens first. So let's move this up, and there we go. You see that that part is now fixed. And now we need to fix these ones. I believe it is this sphere. So if we bring this down to zero, you'll see that that is now fixed as well. We can, of course, also modify our base mesh. So if we just select our mesh, and let's get rid of that rotation, and we go into edit mode, we can do something like add a loop cut down here, let's say, and another one down here. Select all of those faces we just created. Inset those faces in very slightly. And then we can scale it down and make the uh, Z scale one. So now if we exit edit mode, you'll see that we now have that little uh, inset over there. Let's also add a slight bevel to the top of this, so let's go into object mode and select the topmost face and just bevel this out like that. And if we exit you'll see that we now have that bevel and that's still interacting with the booleans just fine. So once you have the shape that you want and you want to finalize this mesh, what you could do is go to your modifiers and hit apply on all of these, but then you'll still be left with this collection and all of the cutters that you won't need anymore. So what we can do instead is just click on our mesh and go to our boolean collections and choose apply all booleans. And this will apply all of our booleans as well as delete all of the cutters that aren't currently cutting anything else as well as deleting our collection that stored all of our cutters. So let's hit apply all booleans and you'll see that just happened there. 
we no longer have any modifiers, the collection is gone, and so are all the cutters. This doesn't look too good though, because it's currently hard shading, so let's just make this a smooth shaded model, and now it looks even worse. So what you can do is go to this object data over here, go to your normals, and hit auto smooth, and that will automatically smooth out where it should be and keep the hard edges, well, hard. We can of course have multiple boolean collections, so let's just drag this off to the side and add, say, a cube, and let's go with another cube, and a... Oh, I don't know, cone. Now what I want is for this cone to cut into both this cube and this cube. So let's select this cone, select this cube, and do a difference. And select this cone and this cube, and do a difference. And you'll see that this cone is cutting into both of these cubes. So if we select this cube, and do a toggle collection visibility, you'll see that this cone is still visible. That's because it is still cutting into this cube. So as long as this cube's modifiers are also visible, this cone will be visible as well. So if we toggle the visibility of this cube, now that cone goes away. And if we bring back the visibility of this cube's cone, it is now visible. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are going to be cutting into multiple things with, well, an object. Also, if we were to apply all booleans to this cube, this cone will not be deleted because it is still cutting into this cube. So let's do that, apply all booleans. Now it looks like the cone disappeared, but that's not actually true because this cube's modifiers are simply invisible. So let's just toggle the visibility and you'll see that that cone is there. And the modifiers still apply to this cube. So if we move the cone around, you'll see that it is only modifying the second cube and not the first one because the first cube has already had its booleans applied to it. If we were to select this cube and apply all booleans, now that cone goes away. And now we only are left with the objects that we want in our collection. Now there is a bug right now and that is if you were to add a modifier to, well another modifier, so let's take this cube and cut into this one and then if we were to add no, just another cube into here and have this cube do something like add into this cube, so let's do a union right there, we'll get an error. And that's because for some reason it doesn't think that collection is in all of our collections, even though it is. You can clearly see it is right there. I'm not sure why this bug is happening, and it only happens when you add a modifier to something that's already modifying something, but it's not like it's going to break the plugin. It's just a minor inconvenience because now that last cube that we added as a modifier to this cube right here isn't removed from our collection. It's still added to the other collection over here, but we had to manually just unlink it from our first collection. Otherwise, when we finalize this cube's booleans, the cube that we are adding to it won't go away. So let's just do that. We'll select this cube, apply all booleans, select this cube, and apply all booleans. And once again, we're just left with these objects plus the camera and the lamp in our one collection. One last thing I forgot to mention, do not rename anything when using this plugin. So obviously when you're making your meshes at first, you can rename those. So if this is your base mesh, you can rename to something like, I don't know, base mesh. But once you've applied a boolean to it using this plugin, don't rename it or the collection that it's in. So if we were to do a difference right here, you'll see that our collection is called base mesh and our mesh is called base mesh. If we look at this mesh's modifiers, you'll see that the boolean is called cube.001. In order for this plugin to work, because that's the way I coded it, all of the names have to stay the same once you've applied a boolean to something. So this collection and the base mesh cannot be renamed if you want these three things to work. Also, the actual modifiers object can't be renamed either unless you also rename the object and the modifier name. If you were to rename the base mesh and the collection name, then that will also work. So basically, if you're gonna rename something, rename everything that it affects. By the way, don't worry if you're wondering if this channel is suddenly going to turn into a Blender channel, it isn't. I don't even actually use Blender, I use Modo. The only reason I made this plugin was because I was bored and I'm probably not going to work on it anymore, to be completely honest. So, if you're thinking about subscribing for more Blender content, don't. I know that's probably a terrible thing to say if I want to try to grow this channel, but I don't want to bring your hopes up for no reason. Anyways, this is normally the part of the video where I say I hope I see you next time, but the people watching this video probably aren't the people that watch my other videos, so um, hope this plugin helps you out instead.
Bye.